A little over a decade ago, Rolls-Royce introduced the Goodwood Ghost. This was designed to be the entry level point into the Rolls-Royce brand. Now, unfortunately for Rolls-Royce, the Ghost was based off of a modified BMW 7 Series platform. And because of that, a lot of enthusiasts questioned the authenticity of the previous generation Ghost. Now for 2021, you can see there's an all new version of the Goodwood Ghost. And unlike its predecessor, this is now built off of the same architecture of luxury platform that also underpins the Phantom and the Cullinan SUV. So if you guys have roughly a half a million dollars to spend and you're looking to buy a Rolls Royce, is this new version of the Ghost truly worthy of the badge? Stay tuned to find out. So an all new version of a Rolls Royce doesn't come around all too often. If you guys are looking at this new Ghost and wondering, is it even all new because it looks kind of like the previous generation? Well, you're gonna have to squint a little bit more because this not only is based off of a new platform, Rolls-Royce says every single body panel is new except for two things. That's the Spirit of Ecstasy logo and the umbrella holder. Now let me talk about the design of this particular one because this silver premier color is $12,000 extra and I think it's completely overpriced. If I was gonna get a Rolls-Royce, I would definitely get a much more distinctive, brighter color. Up at the front, we have the usual Rolls-Royce styling characteristics here. You have these very nice square laser LED headlights. The lasers are only technically part of the high beams. You have this new LED daytime running light um, with the adaptive headlights and automatic high beams. You have this new kind of front end, which kind of mimics the Phantom for me a little bit, although I do think the Ghost looks a little bit nicer than the Phantom. And of course, we have this Parthenon grille, which is actually made of metal. The grill itself, it appears like it has active grill shutters. It's definitely the most distinctive focal point of any Rolls Royce. I think this is probably the best looking out of all the Rolls Royce models. The Cullinan is probably my least favorite in terms of the design. And then of course, we can't talk about a Rolls Royce without mentioning the Spirit of Ecstasy logo. Now, Rolls Royce did move this for this new generation. The previous one had the Spirit of Ecstasy in the grill. Rolls Royce kind of moved it back and now it's actually in the hood. And this one here is uh, a pure sterling silver, which you can see is the standard pick. You can also have it gold plated. And I've seen some owners even customize their Spirit of Ecstasy with diamonds. Now diamonds seem a little ostentatious, but if you guys are thinking, what if I coat this thing in diamonds and somebody wants to steal it? Well, <laughs> that was really quick actually. As you can see, if you try to steal the Spirit of Ecstasy, it will go and hide itself into the hood. So that way you don't have to worry about somebody jacking your sterling silver, gold, or diamond coated Spirit of Ecstasy. Now follow me over to the side profile of this vehicle. Let's look at the proportions because this is supposed to be the baby Rolls Royce, but from the profile, you can tell this is a really big car. It stretches at 219 inches long, which makes this thing around 10 inches longer than something like a Cadillac Escalade or a Ford Expedition or a Lincoln Navigator. Its wheelbase is around 129 inches long. Rolls-Royce says this new version is three and a half inches longer and about an inch wider and slightly lower. So again, this is supposed to be a entry level Rolls-Royce, but really it looks like a flagship. The Phantom is a crazy uh, nine inches longer versus this one. Rolls-Royce also offers two different wheelbase sizes. One is going to be around seven inches longer. Uh, this one here is the standard wheelbase. Rolls-Royce says most people in America end up buying the shorter wheelbase model. Now, of course, with a Rolls-Royce, the magic here is has to do in the ride quality. And this car offers the magic carpet ride from its new suspension as well. It's got a completely new suspension that includes four corner air. And if you want to look at me over here in the wheels, Rolls-Royce is introducing an industry first here in terms of the suspension. It actually has dampers on dampers. If you look in there in the double wishbones, there's actually an extra damper in there to help make the the ride quality even more smooth. It's a little bit over the top, but I guess it wouldn't be a Rolls Royce without uh, over the top features. The camera system in the front of the vehicle also will watch the road in front of you to see if there are potholes and it'll kind of brace the suspension uh, for absorbing that pothole so you don't even feel it. Now, my tester here has a 20 inch wheel. They're wrapped in 255 tires in the front, fatter 285s in the rear. Um, you can see massive disc brakes behind her because this car is nearly 6,000 pounds. I do like the way the wheels look. Uh, and for the first time ever, the Ghost is offering all wheel drive, which is standard. And of course, you're also gonna have all wheel steering, which is going to help this vehicle handle even better. Now, around the side profile, again, I wanna talk about how tall the car is actually. You do have an air suspension, but for a sedan, it rides up a lot higher than I expected. And my tester doesn't have a panel roof. Instead, it has the uh, shooting star headliner. So Rolls-Royce basically says you can get the headliner or you can get the 
panel roof. There are some interesting design touches here on the roof where there are no actual cut lines in the roof um, because Rolls-Royce wanted it to appear kind of like it was milled from a single piece of steel or aluminum. The water channels here to evacuate water off the hood are actually built into the side are the um, side vents of the windowsill, which does make it a, a have a much more cleaner appearance to it. So again, kind of in the details, when you're buying a Rolls-Royce, everything is going to be in the details um, because again, this is a pretty expensive vehicle. Now looking at the rear of the new Ghost, it doesn't look all that different from the previous generation. The taillights have been slightly redesigned. You have this chrome surround around the taillights. You have a very subtle Rolls-Royce badge in the back. And then down here, you can see this exhaust tip here is $5,000 extra for the chrome plated exhaust, which I think is absolutely a waste of money. Um, although it probably makes the car look a little bit better. You can't really hear the V12 anyway, but who in their right mind is gonna spend $5,000 for just a chrome plated exhaust system. Now opening up the trunk, you can see this is going to be impeccably finished in the Rolls-Royce way. There's actually a navy blue carpet back here, which is extra. It actually looks black, but from certain lights, you can see that it's a blue color. It's super plush. This is one of the plushest carpets that I've ever seen in the actual trunk area. And Rolls-Royce says you get around 16 cubic feet of space. So pretty decent sized trunk, uh, which, you know, I'd expect that because this is a very large vehicle. There's no actual spare tire back here. Instead, you're gonna be calling roadside assistance in case you ever get a flat. And as you guys expected, it's a power operated trunk because what more could you expect in something that costs as much as a house? Now, before we move on to the interior of the all new Rolls Royce Ghost, I wanna talk about my favorite party trick with this car. And that's the fact that the spirit of ecstasy can be programmed to basically lock and unlock or raise and lower every time you unlock and lock the car. You can see, I wanna show you guys the key fob for the vehicle. Here's the key fob for the Rolls Royce Ghost. It is a slightly unique key. It doesn't look like any other BMW product that I've seen. If you push the Rolls Royce badge here, you can see locking the car, the spirit of ecstasy goes away and it hides. And remember, if you try to steal that, it'll hide away to prevent any thieves from stealing your silver, your silver or gold plated spirit of ecstasy. When you unlock the car, you can see, it pops back up to let everybody know you've got a very, very expensive car. Now let's look at the front seat of this vehicle first. Now I'm gonna show you guys the rear seat in just a moment, but I do wanna talk about just getting into the car. You can see there is a button here on the outside door handle like every other modern car. When you push that button here, that locks and unlocks the car. Uh, and then you push it again and that will unlock the door for you as well. Which can be a little finicky at times, but when you do that, you can see I'll open the door up. It does have a slight motorized assistance, which is new this year. Before the door only self-closed for you, now it actually will self-open for you, but it only kind of helps you a little bit. The rear seats will open and close for you completely automatically, but the front seats I noticed only kind of offer a little bit of electric assistance because remember these are big and heavy doors and you don't wanna to be straining too many muscles trying to get the door to open and close. Remember a Rolls Royce is all about effortlessness. Now let's look at this interior because that color is really nice compared to the boring silver exterior color that my tester is. Now looking at the cabin, you can see my tester has a really cool three-tone color combination with some contrasting blue stitching. This is actually a navy blue where you're looking at the dark colors and this really nice looking caramel color for the actual seats for the door panels. You can see the Rolls Royce uh, emblem is embroidered into the seat back. The leather is some of the plushest leather that I've ever felt in the industry. In fact, Rolls Royce says they have to go through around 20 cow hides to actually put all the leather in this interior. So if you guys are all about, you know, animals and the environment and you want vegan leather, I'm sorry, Rolls Royce is going to use real leather because this is all about traditional old school British luxury. Even the door panel here has some beautiful details. I love the metal trim work. I love the leather and the blue leather. I love the open pour wood, the metal speaker covers for the 18 speaker bespoke stereo and this beautiful metal trim piece, of course, for the door handles. You can see this is where you'll find your seat memory controls. You got two person memory. You can also turn on your massage sheet. You can control the passenger front seat from the driver's side as well. And these seats adjust in like 20 different ways. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, they offer a massage function and um, they are heated and cooled, which is what you expect when you're going to be buying a car like this. Now, let me step inside the vehicle. And of course, stepping inside the Ghost immediately makes you feel like you've bought something extremely special. And you can close the door manually yourself. There's a little grab handle here at the top of the door, but why bother do that with the rolls? Instead, the button to close the door is right here. Just pull and hold this toggle. 
and you can see the door closes for you and all is just really quiet. It's a very windy day outside and I don't even hear the noisiness of outside. That's how much sound deadening materials are in here. In fact, Rolls-Royce says they put around 220 pounds of sound deadening materials in here. So again, you're spending a lot of money for this car. You're going to get a very quiet and serene cabin. Now, the button to fire up the engine is over here on the left side of the steering wheel. And you don't even hear the engine start up. It has a really smooth, almost electric motor-like whirness to the V12 engine. Remember, this is a 6.75 liter twin turbocharged V12. Now, looking at the rest of this cabin, I love the detail here with the stitching. I love the way the angle that it's been stitched. I love the blue leather. It's just a really soft, plush, high quality cowhide. And I love this open pour wood. I love this color as well. It's just really, really exquisite looking. Uh, I mentioned earlier, the door panels are covered in the same leather, even the steering wheel in this car. It's similar to the last Ghost that I, that I showed you guys, the Series 2 version, but you're gonna notice a couple things with the wheel. First of all, real metal for the buttons, a lot of piano, piano black, the horn, Sounds pretty good. You've got a really nice leather stitched airbag cover, of course, which is nice. The wheel itself is power tilt and telescoping. I wouldn't expect anything less. And then typically a lot of cars have really, you know, cruddy feeling exposed stitching that you can feel here. Not with a Rolls Royce. The, the rim is really thin, but they've actually been able to hide the actual seam here in a really nice place where you're not even gonna notice it. So this is just a small detail that I've never really experienced in other cars before. Some of the turn signal switches, however, this could feel a little bit more high quality, which is a shame because the window controls here are completely made of metal. They feel expensive. They feel really sturdy. The headlight controls are over here. They also have a nice satisfying click to them. Some of the buttons and switch gear you can see here do remind me a little bit of a BMW, but in all honesty, Rolls-Royce has really gone through a lot of lengths here to completely differentiate this cabin. Um, really, the only thing you're going to notice, the infotainment system, this is a 12.3-inch display. This is technically iDrive 7.0. It now includes wireless Apple CarPlay, which the previous generation didn't even include that, so it's nice to see that. I wish that I could expand this to make that the entire screen. You can do, again, a split screen, and you can show a different like screen over here, whatever you'd like to show to kind of contrast the Apple CarPlay. Uh, but you can see the screen itself is a touch screen. It works well. You can also use the Spirit of XTC controller over here if you'd like, although most people are probably just gonna use the touch screen. The interface you can see is very similar to BMW. This looks a lot like BMW, but then coming back to this, it looks very unique. So you can really applaud Rolls-Royce for again, pulling out a lot of stops here to differentiate this. When I put the car into reverse, you can see very good resolution for the 360 camera system. Um, it also includes parking sensors, trajectory. You can also choose un your own separate views. It has an automatic parallel parking feature. Um, so this is a very nice rear view camera system and I wouldn't expect anything less from a vehicle that's this expensive. Moving over here, you can see this is an all digital display. It doesn't look digital, it actually looks analog, but you can see there are some chrome rings there that are fixed. Uh, this isn't terribly customizable. You can kind of customize it a little bit by pushing that button where you can change and show your trip computer and adjust the fuel economy, average speed. You can also make that completely disappear. There's also a heads up display, which is standard. Rolls Royce says it's one of the most clearest heads up displays in the industry. Although sitting over here, it kind of looks like a pretty average system for me. What isn't average, however, is that Spirit of Ecstasy logo there, which if you'd want, you can go into the system here, go to my vehicle, go to Spirit of Ecstasy, and you can lower it if you don't want to be looking at it, or you can raise it to remind your passengers that you're in a Rolls Royce. I kind of wish the company would just give me a separate dedicated button on the steering wheel where I can raise and lower it just because it's a little bit easier to get to. Uh, down here, you can see more controls for your audio system, for the media system. You have your dedicated preset buttons. You have your dual zone climate control. It's technically quad zone. Um, Rolls-Royce doesn't do, you know, uh, automatic. Instead, they have soft, medium, high, and max or off, and then you can adjust the uh, heat or the temperature of the air from your face or from the actual feet, from your feet for both sides. The one thing that I love about Rolls-Royce interior is when I get in here, listen to this. Oh yes, that is so satisfying to hear that these are metal for the actual air vents. Nobody else does that. Even the, this little, rod here to open and close the vent just so fluid it just feels so satisfying this is the volume knob over here between the two vents everything in here just looks and feels very nice you can see your two cup holders are down there uh, which is covered by this really beautiful door that's kind of lined in wood your air suspension button is over here where you can raise and lower it this can access the 360 camera if you'd like you can turn that on and off this is to open and close the doors you can see the spirit of ecstasy this is technically an iDrive controller here but it's been slightly modified with its own unique 
shortcut buttons. Um, this is another separate area right here where you can kind of close this. It has a very clean, uncluttered look to it. You can have a little bit of storage over there. Opening this up, you can see your wireless phone charger is in there. I actually was able to fit my iPhone 12 Pro Max, which is nice a USB-C charging port, a pretty decent amount of space in here. Surprisingly, the one thing I don't like about this car is the interior lighting. Now, I'm going to show you guys a couple clips of the interior at night because obviously this panel lights up. This also has the star view headliner the, with the shooting stars. I highly recommend that. But Rolls-Royce only offers two interior colors here for the interior lighting, and I kind of wish they offered more. If you go to vehicle settings here, you go to lighting, or uh, you go to interior lighting, uh, you can see they only offer two colors, warm white and cool white. I really think Rolls-Royce should consider offering more colors uh, in this luxury space. I think that's something that they should definitely be including, especially when you look at Mercedes or Maybach, for example, that offers all those different colors. Now, the seats, they are some of the most plush and most comfortable seats I've ever experienced in the industry. Love the seats. The glove compartment, you can see, damped, lined with felt. Very, very nice plush carpeting on the inside of that. And it's a relatively decent size. This panel right here, Rolls-Royce says, uh, has around 90,000 individual LEDs to light up. And it also spells out ghost in case you forgot what you're driving. That's one of my favorite features in this interior for sure. I mean, overall, you get a sense that you're driving something special. That's exactly the way you feel by looking at the Spirit of Ecstasy, how long this hood uh, is for the vehicle, and just the overall like cocoon feeling. You feel like you're driving a tank. You feel like you're driving something that's incredibly safe, that would, would, that would stand a rollover or any kind of terrible accident. Hopefully that never happens to you, but that's kind of the whole point of when you buy a Rolls Royce, everything in here just feels completely impeccably made, which a lot of it is uh, handcrafted. That's one of the reasons why Rolls Royce is so bloody expensive. So even though a lot of owners end up driving the Ghost in the Rolls-Royce lineup, the back seat is really where you're going to want to spend all of your time. Now, before we get back there, I want to mention a couple of things. The power operating doors. Now, new this year is the fact that when you open the door, they kind of electrically assist in opening. Now, they don't always open automatically, although it will if I'm sitting inside. But um, when you kind of first open the door, it kind of, you can feel the electric assist because this door is pretty heavy. And you, of course, you have the classic Rolls-Royce suicide doors. You also have the classic Rolls-Royce umbrellas. These umbrellas are $1,200 extra, but you can see it matches the interior color. So I guess it's worth the extra 1200 bucks if you guys have matching umbrellas. The door also has a soft close feature where if I just kind of touch it a little bit here, you can see it automatically closes. I also noticed a couple things. The door handle here, I've never seen this before. When you open and close it, it actually is dampened. It doesn't slam back into the body panel like so many other cars. So again, it's all in the details when you buy a car like a Rolls Royce. Now, let me get back here and show you guys the space. Now, I mentioned earlier, there is a model that offers seven more inches of legroom back here if you guys go for the long wheelbase version. This is the standard wheelbase, and you still get 42 inches of legroom back here, which is plentiful. This is the same as in terms of legroom space as the front seats. And this one here has an option package called the immersive rear seat with the center console. It's $18,500 for that package, which is just insane. You could buy an actual car for $18,000, but it includes such things like the center console here, which has a refrigerator and a whiskey decanter and champagne flutes. And my tester here has optional picnic tables back here for another $5,000. So to access that, you push this little button right here. You can see the picnic table folds down and you can see they're also lined in this beautiful cication wood. It's an open pour wood. And the screens back here, of course, are extra. This is another like $5,000 extra where it has the same interface as basically the front. You can also watch movies back here. You can control the GPS. You can control you know, your radio information. This is a touch screen here. You have similar things on the other side back here. And of course, being a Rolls Royce, the back seat is, of course, going to be coddling people just as much as the front. You have full power adjustments back here where I can literally move the seat forward. I can recline it back. Um, I can activate a massage feature. These are also heated and cooled. You have a lot of nice touches back here like leather stitching everywhere. The interior is basically cocooned in leather back here. I mentioned earlier that Rolls-Royce had to kill like 20 cows to make the leather interior in this vehicle. So if you guys want something that's vegan or animal friendly, you're not going to want um, a Rolls-Royce. Now, the Starlight headliner that my tester has obviously means that we don't get the panel roof. I'll show you guys some footage, of course, what this panel looks like at night. You can literally see shooting stars going across the headliner every few seconds, and it really makes the ambience in this cabin feel extra special, and that's kind of one of the reasons why you end up choosing a Rolls-Royce. But overall, you still get a lot of features back here. Um, you have a USB charging port on the door. You have rear seat air vents back here, which the vents themselves, you can see, 
are even metal and they have that same really high quality pull and pit or pull and push pin that opens and closes the vents. So again, all the attention, the detail that you were expecting in the front seats, it's carried over into the rear. And really, could you expect anything less for a back seat that charges you an extra $18,000 for just the extra features back here? Now, in case you're wondering, when you open up the hood, you can see the Spirit of Ecstasy logo will hide itself under there because when you open it up, you can see the Spirit has this little place right here where it gives you a nice little cut line on the hood so you can see how nicely integrated it is and uh, it won't get in the way if you guys actually need to service the engine, which you aren't gonna be doing that yourself. You're gonna be paying somebody at the Rolls-Royce dealership to do that. But the powertrain for the new Ghost, of course, is the very familiar 6.75 liter. That's right, it's a 6.75 liter twin turbocharged V12. That's right, Rolls-Royce is still doing a V12 inside the new Ghost. And the numbers are pretty impressive, 563 horsepower. That's an increase of around 40 versus the previous generation and 627 pound-feet of torque. That torque figure is basically the same as the previous generation black badge model, which that model had a little over 600 horsepower. So I expect Rolls-Royce to eventually introduce a black badge of this um, whenever, you know, this generation starts getting some more changes. Now, of course, this is a nearly 6,000 pound beast, but Rolls-Royce says you should be able to get to 60 in around 4.6 seconds, which is incredible for a vehicle that's this large. Like I said earlier, all-wheel drive is going to be standard. The rear drive of the previous generation, that is gone. I'm glad that Rolls-Royce did all-wheel drive. It's got an eight-speed uh, ZF automatic transmission, and you also get four-wheel steering with this new generation. So again, Rolls-Royce says this is the driver's car of their lineup. Uh, in terms of fuel economy, in case you guys care, it's rated at 12 city, 19 highway. This car is hit with a $2,600 gas guzzler tax, which if you can afford the price tag, you're probably not gonna care too much about spending that. So not very many people in the world get an opportunity to drive a Rolls Royce. Now, obviously I like to drive vehicles, but being owning a Rolls Royce is also about what it's like to experience this car as a passenger. Now to show you guys that I'm playing chauffeur duty and I'm also doing things a little differently because as you can see, it is nighttime because this car seriously is where you wanna be at night because of the star view headliner or the shooting star headliner and all the different lights here. Now to help me do that, I've got my good friend Keith in the back. He, <laughs> I'm playing chauffeur and he's going to basically tell us what his experience is like from the back seat. Now, this is his first time in the back seat. Keith, what are your thoughts so far? The pinnacle of luxury. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this I car thing back here. <laughs> as you should because, you know, we're driving a car that's a half a million dollars. I mean, even the interior lighting in here is phenomenal. The um, I don't even need any kind of like exterior camera lights because it's so bright in here, but I do want to turn off this light in here. Um, Let's not crash the half a million dollars. <laughs> now, I turned off the lights so you can basically see the Shooting Star headliner. And what is the ambiance like back there, Keith, with the Shooting Star headliner? Very elegant. <laughs> can you very, see very some Shooting Stars? Bougie, you get a little bit of everything. Yeah, there's some Shooting Stars back here. It's just unbelievable. I just saw three, actually. <laughs> now, Who needs the real sky when you have this? this <laughs> so remember, Rolls-Royce gives you a choice between the Pano sunroof or the Shooting Star headliner. What would you get? You know, after seeing this at nighttime, I would definitely pick this. Yeah, I it love is. the sunshine. Oh, sorry, I interrupted you. No, go ahead. <laughs> it is um, a very nice, nice looking thing at night. I will agree. Yeah, <laughs> it's worth it. Yep, in addition to the Shooting Star headliner, we also have these individual lights on the front of the vehicle, uh, or at least on the dashboard here on the passenger side where it looks really three-dimensional and it spells out ghost, just to remind you that we're driving a ghost, in case you forgot. It feels like a ghost floating, <laughs> it just floats down the road. Yeah, the ride quality in this car is definitely that magic carpet ride. Remember, we've got four corner air suspension and it's literally dampers on dampers in the front. Um, so this is the floatiest, cushiest ride quality I've ever tried out. Uh, it is very, very impressive. Now, I'm gonna turn the lights back on so <laughs> we can, be light. I can see a little bit, although your light didn't come on. Yeah, my light didn't come on. Very bad light. I need the back one here, hold on. Oh, there we go. There okay, <laughs> but in terms of driving, I mean, as a driver, this is supposed to be the driver's SUV. So we've got four wheel steering, we've got four wheel drive. That's the first time ever on a Rolls Royce Ghost. Um, we also have a twin turbocharged V12 with 563 horsepower. And remember, this beast weighs like 5,600 pounds. It's not that much lighter than that Ram TRX. Yeah, I mean, it feels like a big boat down the road, although 
I will say that as a, from the driver's seat, this thing feels like it's a lot smaller than it actually is. It feels very confident, very stable. Um, as a passenger, though, you notice, what do you notice, Keith, as a passenger? <laughs> As a passenger, well, I mean, it's definitely very different in the back seat, but when I was in the front passenger seat earlier, I noticed that there isn't very much bolstering mm -hmm. just because this isn't a sports car. <laughs> so I found myself when Sofian was driving a little bit aggressive. Yeah, I think Roll should consider allowing the bolsters to kind of squeeze and hug you a little bit more because um, you do find yourself kind of flailing around. I mean, as a driver, I can kind of hold myself in the seat as I'm anticipating which way my body's going to lean when I'm turning. <laughs> it's just amazing to me that this nearly 6,000 pound Rolls Royce will gallop to 60 in four and a half seconds. And honestly, it's not, it's not as fast as some of the cars that I've driven that you've been in with me before, but it's, it's the feeling of speed with this car. Yeah. Um, it literally ha offers all 627 pound feet of torque at 1600 RPM, which is basically 600 RPM higher than idle for this engine. It's got such a flat, meaty torque curve, and it's got one of the smoothest transmissions I've ever experienced. You can't even feel the shifts. <laughs> uh, and I also really noticed the four-wheel steering in this car pretty well. I mean, there's no different drive modes in here, which I kind of appreciate. There's no sport mode. There's no, um, you know, any kind of mode that would change the steering or the suspension. And I just think that it's pretty cool. Oh, that's right, Keith, you should show them what are some of the features back there that you can take advantage of? Cool. Well, it looks like we have a cold champ champagne cooler of some sort. Or fridge. Know, Actually, Rolls-Royce says they've, t they've programmed that refrigerator to chill champagne to the perfect temperature. So you can sip like this. <laughs> <laughs> and there's also in the center console below the fridge, show us what we've got in there. <laughs> okay. Well, we got some kind of what is this? <laughs> it's I want crystal. Oh yes, it's a whiskey decanter. <laughs> decanter. Okay. Yes. Whatever. And some crystal <laughs> Rolls Royce glasses, yeah, as well. I, uh, I have to roll my eyes at some of this, well, um, and I have to say it is a Rolls Royce. So you're gonna roll your eyes at some of these things. Yeah, that is very befitting of a Rolls Royce because some of the things in here are just over the top. Opulent is what. Uh, is what you get when you buy a Rolls Royce. But I mean, you can't deny just how expensive this car, like you feel like a baller driving this car and you feel like an even bigger baller riding in the back seat with a driver. Because you know, you might as well just like, Keith, where should we go tonight? Is there anywhere in particular you'd like to go? I mean, wherever there's Grey Poupon. <laughs> what if I don't like Grey Poupon? Well, too bad, I'm, you are driving me. That's so true. you were to go. Okay, <laughs> we'll go find you some Grey Poupon, but <laughs> the first we thing... We just get it at Walmart. <laughs> Drop me off at Dollar Tree. <laughs> Ooh. It's a good thing this headrest's soft. <laughs> wow, that is uh, very impressive. And the brakes, honestly, they're not bad. It's a heavy beast, but I just want to... It stops really well for such a heavy car. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow. It doesn't have launch control, but I did a little brake torque there, and wow. The front end of this car literally like leaps off the ground. It is just insane. <laughs> yeah, and you, you, you definitely want to sink your bare feet into that carpet because it's just so plush. I mean, it's, it is it is one of the finest carpets that you'll find, um, which is good because, you know, there are some things about this car that kind of are a letdown. I mean, the interior tech certainly is much upgraded this year, but it's still not up to the level of, you know, some of the other competitors that you can get for half the price. The Maybach comes to mind. Uh, I have not driven the new Maybach yet, but um, it is based on the new S-Class for 2022, and I'm super excited to drive it, and it's half the price of this roll. So, I mean, there are certain things about this car that certainly make it feel very special, but at the end of the day, I do believe that you are paying for the badge. What do you think, Keith? I agree. It's definitely, you're paying for the badge for sure, because it's just, that's the top of the top, it's Rolls Royce. Like, where do you go from there? 
It does come with active cruise control, lane departure alert, but the driver assistance tech in this car doesn't really self-drive the way that you'd even find on some of the BMWs where it has the you know, traffic jam assistance, which it's a Rolls Royce. You're probably gonna have yourself a driver anyways, case in point. <laughs> um, fuel economy, 12 city, 19 highway. Uh, it's hit with a $2,600 gas guzzler tax. The people who buy this car isn't going to give a damn about the fuel economy. You're just going to fill it up with gas anyways. And whenever Rolls-Royce decides to go electric, that's going to be probably where they're heading in the next few years. I mean, this car in general is the pinnacle of internal combustion. It accelerates and you know sounds as quiet basically as an electric car. I forget that this V12 is even running in the background. The eight-speed automatic, you can't even feel the shifts. And the fact that it's now all-wheel drive is a great thing. But I can't help but wonder, this car is about the same price as a Cullinan. Uh, and I think I'd rather have the Cullinan just because it's an SUV, it sits up higher. So after spending some time with the all new 2021 Rolls-Royce Ghost, I'm pretty impressed with what Rolls-Royce has done here. Even though the car is very evolutionary in terms of its design changes on the outside and on the inside, really it's the changes underneath the vehicle, the all new architecture of luxury platform, the addition of all wheel drive and four wheel steering. This is definitely the driver's car within the Rolls-Royce family, even though a lot of people who buy these technically has a driver. But really, if you guys are still thinking this is just a guzzied up version of a BMW 7 series, you could couldn't be more than wrong because this now drives and handles very similar to the last Cullinan I drove. Even though I haven't driven the new Phantom, this is probably the Rolls Royce that I see a lot of younger buyers end up ending up choosing. Even though it still doesn't necessarily have a price tag that's attainable, remember Rolls Royce likes to consider themselves to be in a league of their own. Because if you wanted to compare this car to something like a Maybach, Mercedes Maybach, or a Bentley Flying Spur, the Rolls Royce Ghost has a starting price of nearly $120,000 more than its two closest rivals. At a starting price of $332,500, that's right, 300 grand, over 300 grand, this is about $15,000 more expensive than the previous generation, which was dubbed the Series 2. Of course, with any Rolls Royce, these are bespoke vehicles, and you can basically custom tailor them to your heart's content. Do yourself a favor, don't get this silver color. I would easily choose one of the brighter colors, maybe a British racing, racing green. You can also get this in purple if you'd like, or pink. My particular tester here with all of the options, there are just too many to list here, has a sticker price of $460,000. Nearly a half a million dollars for something like this makes this car nearly twice the price of its Maybach and Bentley competitors. While I haven't driven those vehicles yet, I can confidently say that when you drive a Rolls Royce, it instantly makes you feel like you're filthy rich. It kind of makes you feel special in a way that perhaps the Maybach or the Bentley may not do. Because in the automotive world, there literally is not a brand I believe that is higher in the luxury hierarchy versus Rolls Royce. And that's essentially what you're paying for is you're paying for the Rolls Royce badge in addition to being hand built and just custom tailored to however way you'd like to build this thing if you guys have an endless amount of money. But with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the 2021 Rolls Royce Ghost. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews. Like us on Facebook. And as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.